how you guys welcome back to the channel it's your girl colors and i'm back with another video if this is your first time here welcome today's video might ruffle a little bit of feathers i don't know yet but it's gonna be an unpopular opinion video and the topic is gonna be about weddings so i just want to say it's an opinion I wanted to really talk about weddings because I have a lot of experience on weddings. I had my own wedding. If you don't know, you might think like where you have a way in this topic. I am married. I just don't wear my wedding ring because it don't fit. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. Yes, I can get it resized. Not really a big deal. Been together 13, well, 13 years going, heading towards 14, and we've been married eight years something like that so I think I have a little bit of way in this topic also I've probably been to 10 or 12 weddings I've been to a lot of weddings and I've been a part of probably three or four so I have a little bit of opinions about weddings in general most likely it's going to be a part two of this video because I have a lot to say Let's start with the first opinion. Okay, my first unpopular opinion is you don't need to do wedding vows. Okay, listen, hold up. If you are a person who wants to do it, great. But if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I don't think it just has to be a thing. It just have the wedding officiant kind of come with a customized situation that you two are comfortable with. And then you share something in the privacy of your home. I actually wrote my wedding vows on the day of my wedding. Well, technically it was the night before, but I accidentally deleted it and had a bridesmaid come and help me rewrite my wedding vows. And then it ended up turning out pretty good. But there was a lot of stress around that because I don't really like attention like that. Doing public speaking situations, I ain't like it. Not having one in vows should be okay. My next unpopular opinion is don't do paper wedding invitations. I just feel like it's a waste of money. Calm down. I feel like it's not really creative if you're going to send out something. I think actually doing something more like sending like a wedding invitation video, having something more personable that you can like record with your fiance, or even work something in with your videographer that's going to do your engagement photos, maybe have like a situation kind of displaying your relationship, talking about how you met in the whole nine, something that you can especially even add to your a wedding website situation if you're going to do something like that but create like a wedding video and send that to or in a text message to all the people you can just get their number and send that out and then the people who aren't tech savvy like the elders send them like a thumb drive of the video then what they have I'm pretty sure they have a computer where they could just boop and then see what it is if not just tell them about it or just make a paper version just for them or even add the thank yous inside of a video maybe even do it all at one time and thank them in advance for coming <laughs> my next unpopular opinion is put most of your focus into your food and your venue i feel like everything in between is it's just unnecessary stress details handkerchiefs silverware and all these things and all these extra colors i just feel like all those little details don't matter and i know you probably heard this before that's because in my opinion it's true it's true the things that you remember the food and the venue you go to all right i feel like i need to interject right here because i made it seem like the only important things you need to pay attention to is food in your venue and that's simply not true and i kind of said it backwards honestly your food is very important but having back wall draping over trumps the venue having draping and lighting 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 is a must lighting will transform your space from boring to boom so honestly i would change it out and say food and lighting and back wall draping would be like the top things and probably your tall centerpieces i feel like those little details some of them you can actually skip out on the next unpopular opinion and this is not so much an unpopular opinion as it is advice. And that is whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Don't try to control the situation on the wedding day. Let the pieces fall where they may. 
have someone that you know, a best friend made an honor situation that knows the fine details and tell them unless it's completely necessary to know about it, don't worry about it. Have that person be your contact person as for if anything goes wrong. So if you have a vet planner, talk to her, not to me. Because at the end of the day, this is your day and you're supposed to be experiencing the wedding and not stressing about planning because you spent a year to whatever get into this day. This day is here. If things going to go wrong, they are going to go wrong and there's nothing you can literally do about it. This is not a party. This is your wedding and the start of your future. So don't be the point of contact for who needs to get to the hotel, all that stuff, that you are not the point of contact for that. And if someone needs to come to you with questions, let it be your designated person and your designated person only. Because thinking back on my wedding day, I feel like about time it was time for me to walk down the aisle, I was overwhelmed. You can probably see it. I might put something up here. I had the most stress bumps and all kind of my face because I was stressed so much. My next unpopular opinion is if it comes to your preparation of getting ready to make it to the venue or your pictures and being on time, make your guests wait. I would naturally not advise this and I know like people are going to have their say about it but they feel like oh you might be selfish be selfish because the only thing your guests had to do was show up we love that we appreciate that but at the end of the day we're several thousands of dollars and this is my event my day my future something I paid for and I paid this person to take these photos So unfortunately, it's not my fault that you don't know that this person just showed up 30 minutes late or an hour late, or this person wasn't in point A, point B, or the makeup artist was taking extra longer for the videographer to do what they need to do. These are things you do not know. So unfortunately, I don't need to cut my pictures short just to make sure I appease you. And I know that sounds harsh, but it is what it is. And I wish I knew that on my wedding day because I literally did not get photos that I should have got. I got some photos, but not nearly as as what I needed. And plus the same videographer, which was actually crazy in hindsight, that was supposed to do pictures and photos uh, with us and the bridesmaids was the same one who was supposed to do it for the um, groomsmen. So I have barely zero to no, actually, I have none preparation of professional photos or videos of the guys getting ready. We have a few of me getting ready, but they were so forced and you can actually tell that. And because we was like racing against time to make it down the street that was literally like seven minutes away. Granted, I got married at the Florida Aquarium. It was during Comic-Con, which was like next door to me. So it was a lot of events. So I was just like rushing. And there was this moment. This is probably one of the most oddest regrets I have. There was this point in time that, mind you, this is Comic-Con. And I had no idea that a lot of people who was going to Comic-Con was staying at the same exact hotel I was at. So when me and my bridesmaids was coming down the stairs, there was like hundreds of people just in the courtyard of the hotel. And when I came out, there was literally a standing ovation when I came down. And I ran. I don't know why that makes me sad, but that's, that's to the point of how stressed out, overwhelmed, my mental wasn't there. I ran because I was afraid of the the guests seeing me because some of the guests were staying at the same hotel. So I was afraid that somebody was going to see me, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter if they see me. It matters if my husband didn't see me because I come to present myself to him but I thought in tradition that I had to not be seen so I'm literally like covering myself and they're standing there like stand up whoa 
and seeing me and I smile and I'm like, woo, ran and heard the jump in the car and I'm literally in the car covering myself. It's wild. Just enjoy. Enjoy the moment, take it in and remember why you're doing it. The next unpopular opinion is expect people not to show up. That's just flat out what it is. Expect that no matter what, who you send your invitation to, that there will people that will tell you yes and blatantly don't show up. And then even after your wedding, you may not even hear from them again or a reason why they never showed up. Whatever number you think you're going to have, probably shave it down. I'm not going to tell you how much because you know your situation better than me. But I will tell you that I invited 125 people to my wedding and only 109 showed up. Mind you, I paid $110 per plate. I'll let that sink in. 15 plates or so went to waste and I paid for them. And probably over half those people never told me why or I'm I'm sorry. Also, on the back end, you might not want to hear it, it's bet to possibly lose some relationships in the process or have some people disappoint you that you thought would never disappoint you. I actually lost my best friend to my wedding experience. Another unpopular opinion is buy a simple baseline dress and dress it up with jewelry. But basically buy like a simple basic color dressed in the silhouette that you want. So if it's trumpet mermaid or whatever, buy whatever that's gonna look scrumptious on you. A little bit of lacy, a little bit of shine, and then spruce it up with like, they have the bridal capes. So gorgeous going over your shoulders or whatever and going down as a trail. And you can really spruce it up with the head pieces and the jewelry with the cape. There's also like shoulder jewelry that goes down your shoulders like this. And it's so pretty and goes across your neck and your chest. And it comes down like jewelry all over your shoulders. You can do like bridal cuffs, like the real thick sparkly cuffs and real lavish earrings so that's a way to compact spending too much money on a dress while still looking expensive unpopular opinion have a girl's day right and do a makeup and hair day trial with your maid of honor and split the cost or you pay for or maybe she pay for her hair and you split the cost of her makeup situation and do like a mock-up of what you want the bridesmaids hair and makeup to look like and choose one makeup look and hairstyle for everyone that way that you know exactly what the bridesmaids hair and makeup is going to look like that way you are confident on the vibe i would highly suggest like a soft matte lip but i would say definitely do a mock-up so that way if you want to do like a low ponytail which is really popular that way you can see what that looks like if you want to do like a middle part versus a slick situation just basically know exactly what you're going to get into with your bridesmaid so that you're 100 happy with it ahead of time and then when you're doing it take pictures for you and your makeup artist and the hair artist and save those photos so that when the day comes and you're satisfied with that look, they can go based off of those exact photos of what they did before so they don't, so they don't switch it up again. In that way, that should help everything run smoother and help with time. Also too, I would suggest having a separate makeup artist for you, somebody else to do the makeup looks for the other girls. And that will help combat with time so that it's not just one person dragging everyone through because then it is harder on the makeup artist. Unpopular opinion. So do wedding vows ahead of time and share that your wedding vows with your partner. Maybe even make it a situation, a cute little moment where it's more personable, where you are pretty much speaking life into each other and the reason why I'm saying that is you don't want your wedding vows to be so amazing and his undercut it because I feel like that's more embarrassing 
in front of people if he don't have as much to say or if you don't have as much to say and he has a lot to say. But the reason why I say that too is because on my wedding day, I had like a really heartfelt, a well-written wedding vow and he did too but his was a lot shorter and more cut dry and like generic and he didn't even think that I was gonna go like personable wise so he kind of regrets his vows to this day and he wished he, he could have been more personable if he had known what I written so that's kind of the background of why I say what I said I feel like a lot of people's not gonna agree with this and that's okay and that is wedding favors is not mandatory, but appreciated. I honestly feel like a lot of people don't even remember to take the wedding favors. I feel like if you already strep for cash for whatever reason and the money ain't money in, that is probably one of the first things I will forego in the wedding process because I feel like it just doesn't hold a lot of significance. If you must do a wedding favor, do something super cheap, put in candy, Hershey Kisses, some chocolate into the little clear containers that you probably get from Dollar Tree, put a little bow on it and keep it pushing. But I just don't think it's something that's serious to uh, stress over. A lot of times after they eat and toast and the speeches is happening, like people leave without them. I cannot tell you how many times I've help the brides clean up a situation and straighten up and grab all the little gifts. And I seen the wedding wine opener still on the table. Like, I just don't think that it's that deep. And even if they, people feel some type of way about it, like that's their business. Like let them talk because you can do everything perfect and they're still gonna talk. But the last unpopular opinion that I have is instead of hiring a luxury service, car service for your departure scene for the little sparkler situation, order a luxury car situation that you can keep for two nights. And that way have one of your peoples pull up in the luxury car and then you and your hubby get into that side of the vehicle and y'all both personally drive off by yourselves in the luxury vehicle, park the vehicle at the hotel, stay at the hotel for an extra night and then y'all have a luxury car and a day in the hotel kind of night where y'all kind of get to talk about your experience, love on each other. That would just be my suggestion. All right, so this is gonna be the end of my part one of my unpopular wedding opinion situation. I hope this wasn't too far off, but at the same time, it's just my opinion and it is what it is. It's my opinion, it's based off of my own experience and it is not facts. So if you made this far in the video, make sure you comment down a ring down in the comment section and I will see you guys in part two. Bye.